Over the last decade, it's become an essential asset in military interventions. Now the preferred means of carrying out reconnaissance and observation, the drone is a source of fascination. As France and the UK prepare to work together to develop futuristic drones capable of carrying out strikes on the enemy, the Journal de la Défense takes a closer look at this rapidly evolving military resource. A drone is an aerial vehicle with no pilot on board and is either fully autonomous or piloted remotely from a ground station. Unlike a missile, for example, the drone is used multiple times. It might be a land vehicle, a surface vessel, or even a submarine. So if it's automated, piloted remotely to carry out a mission and be retrieved afterwards, whatever kind of environment it's in, it can be considered a drone. There are different kinds of drones, ranging from the small to the large, from the size of a pen to the size of a Boeing. Discreet and robust, drones are used to gather and send information in real time, all along the chain of command. To do that, the armed forces mainly use airborne drones. This, for example, is a close-range reconnaissance drone, known as a DRAC. It's hand-launched and travels at a speed between 60 and 90 kilometers per hour. It could be compared to a pair of long-range binoculars for ground troops. It provides immediately available intelligence for troops. What's behind a ridge, what's around the next bend, the kind of information that's very important for ensuring the security of troops on the ground. There was a real change in the 90s with the Gulf War, and just before that with the rise of computers that allowed technologies to be interconnected. That interconnection enabled different branches of the armed forces, or even different allies, to work together jointly using these systems. The STDI, Interim Tactical Drone System, provides troops with reconnaissance directly in the field, flying at altitudes of up to 3,500 meters. It can detect a light vehicle six kilometers away. This one will have a range of a few dozen kilometers, stay in the air for a few hours, and provide all the troops on the ground with intelligence on the next phase of maneuvers. What they'll be doing in the next six to eight hours, so they can ready their next course of action. The Air Force's drones, as big as actual planes, can operate up to 900 kilometers from their base, the distance between Paris and Rome. They're known as MAIL drones, which stands for Medium Altitude Long Endurance. On est clair pour engagement du target restant. They provide global intelligence on all interventions and guide decisions or large-scale maneuvers at the highest level. Currently, male drones are used extensively, particularly in the Sahel Saharan Strip. They provide long range intelligence on this vast territory. Most of the pilots operating these drones are ex fighter pilots. Their roles include facilitating the work of the ground or air combat units by helping to identify potential targets. Unlike planes which fly over the zone, take a photo and return to base a few hours later, the drone is intrinsically designed to stay over its objective. It's the difference between intermittent surveillance of a target and its environment and constant surveillance. So this airborne vehicle being piloted from the ground, the pilot isn't on board, that's not because it's dangerous, but because it allows for longer missions. Whereas a fighter plane will fly a four-hour mission, the drone can operate over the target zone for 18 hours. 
With a pilot on the ground, it allows him to take a step back and get a wider picture of the event. It gives him access to extra sensors that he doesn't have on a fighter plane, in particular image analysis tools. The analyst can examine the imagery in real time, which isn't possible on board of a fighter plane. So the drone speeds up the decision cycle, from the infantry on the ground to the centers of operations based in France. The imagery and intelligence acquired is fed back to them almost immediately. Having a friendly eye in the sky that lets us anticipate the enemy's reactions, both in the immediate environment thanks to its optical sensors, but also at longer ranges of 40 to 70 kilometers with its radar, really does provide valuable support. The Neuron, the experimental combat drone demonstrator in development in Europe since 2003, offers a glimpse of the future. It's been designed to test technologies likely to equip future unmanned combat air vehicles, or UCAVs. Although there's no pilot on board, human input remains at the heart of the system. The vehicle is guided remotely by a crew able to alter its trajectory at any time and retake control. The advantage of the drone is that it can be deployed at any time, any place to look for the intelligence you need. The drone doesn't operate alone. The drone will provide intelligence, identify an enemy or point of interest, but it's the human who ultimately makes the decision. In the future, you might have not just one, but several drones, all launched simultaneously, all communicating with each other to find the intelligence, with one drone pinpointing the enemy's location and another designating the target for neutralization. So that might be a development in the future. Not just one drone, but a number of drones, a group cooperating to accomplish the mission. The last 10 years have seen considerable technological and industrial advances. According to experts, global spending on civil and military drone budgets is set to double to almost 12 billion euros by 2022. The civilian military zone industry is experiencing rapid growth, partly thanks to subsidies from the rapid program run by the DGA, the French government's defense procurement agency. Hundreds of SMEs have already benefited from the program in order to trial or develop technologies for military and civilian applications alike. One example is this small business based in Marseille. Created in 2005, it employs 20 people and was responsible for developing the Katsuvere, a marine drone designed for civilian and military use. What's completely new is the ability to take a submarine robot and get underwater images with a piece of equipment that can be controlled remotely from up to several kilometers away. The surface drone allows the submarine drone to inspect the site by remote control at a distance of up to four or five kilometers. The drone alone can cover an inspection zone that would normally require between 25 and 30 divers. Since its creation, the company has doubled its turnover every three years and has no intention of stopping there. We have other developments in the pipeline to help better see and understand what goes on under the water. And while until now competition with divers has been something of an obstacle, I think we're showing, as with our American competitors, for example, that what we do is more complement than competition. Resupply, rescue or combat the drones of the future are set to be used in an ever-increasing number of ways. The next step is the micro-drone, a drone you can hold in your hand, the size of an insect that will let you, for example, in urban combat, see what's going on in the next room. Micro-drones, solar-powered drones, nano-drones as small as insects, or morpho-drones that blend into their environment, some of these new designs are already technological reality. However, drones do have some drawbacks. 
peut-être soumis au brouillage. They can be jammed. Peut-être piraté. They can potentially be hacked. Alors qu'il est beaucoup plus Whereas it's far more difficult to hack a human being. We're still a long way from humans being replaced by drones. Par le drone. I think we're still just at the beginning. So even though drones have been around for over a century, we're still at the start in terms of using them. We're just finding out. In the future, technological advances will allow us to envisage systems with artificial intelligence. What we see today is just a prelude. For unmanned systems, this is surely just the beginning.